Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Kristen Matson, and I'm a chaplain resident at Aurora St. Luke's Hospital. I will be your moderator for today's Chalk Talk. And it is my great, great pleasure to introduce to you Sandy Mushka. Sandy is an advanced practice nurse. She's been practicing for 42 years. Um, and I recently learned one of her claims to fame is that she was part of the original palliative care program at MCW. So it's a treat to have her here with us today. She will be delivering a talk that I'm very much looking forward to and I'm certain we can all benefit from. And that presentation is entitled A Transformational Year of Delight and Discovery with some alternative titles that I'm sure she will share. Um, today's two-part format will begin with Sandy's presentation and PowerPoint, during which we ask that you remain muted. The second part will be an open discussion. You can feel free to um, ask questions with your um, audio on, or you can put questions and comments into the chat function. As always, thank you for taking time out of your week to come learn with us. And with that, I pass it off to you, Sandy. Thanks, Kristen. Good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here. I'm a little nervous, but uh, I think we'll get through this. This is gonna be a unique Chalk Talk. Um, this is not scientifically based or evidence-based. This is my story of my self-care journey through this year. And I'll tell you more about that as we go. I did title it A Transformational Year of Delight and Discovery. And there were alternative uh, titles that I came up with too. There's actually more than these two, but What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger, and I'm Still Standing, which has been, actually cannot get that song out of my head for the last couple months. So, um, and there's more to come about that. So I hope you enjoy it. I, my plan is to tell you my story and then um, hopefully have some time at the end. I'd like to hear from everybody else so that we can um, hear what you've learned about self-care and how you've taken care of yourself over this year too. So my story starts in January of 2020. Um, each year we have to come up with our personal goals for the year. And um, I did choose my personal goal of uh, looking for strategies to promote wellness and prevent clinician burnout this year. Um, part of my tasks for that were to present my story at the end of the year to my team um, to talk about what I learned, what I what worked, what didn't work, and did I survive or didn't I? And um, and so that's why I'm presenting the story today. Um, I've been a nurse for, like Kristen said, over 42 years, getting close to retirement. Always been, almost all of those years have been in oncology or and or palliative care. And so there's definitely been some times when I've been through some burnout. Um, this year, with everything else that's gone on, has been extremely challenging. So. As I said before, I'm hoping that when I'm done, you'll feel comfortable to share some of your insights with all of us so we can keep learning from everybody too, okay? Here we go. Hope you enjoy the story. So this is a mystery story. And the mystery question is, was this the best year to pick this goal? <laughs> um, it, you know, who knew what we were looking forward to in January when we, when we all picked this goal? I thought I was looking forward to a really great, exciting year and obviously things change. So the story, I, at the end of the story, I will tell you if this is a yes or no answer. So along comes January, February, um, I did start right away on my tasks. Um, I took to heart my challenge to take care of myself. Um, a long time ago, I found the book called Simple Abundance, which was all about gratitude. And I started a gratitude journal back probably in around 1997, probably when I first got into palliative care. I didn't keep it up over the years, but I figured with this goal for this year that I would start doing that again. And basically what I do is not every night, but at least a few times a week before I go to sleep at night, I have the journal at my bedside and I'll write down three things I was grateful for during the day. And usually when I do that, I actually am able to fall asleep a little easier and try to get rid of some of the day stuff. So I do notice a difference when I don't do it at night. Um, I also wanted to um, include trying to connect uh, better with my friends and family because with all the talking we do all day long with our patients and families, uh, when I get home at night, it's really hard for me to make a phone call, even sometimes to my mom or to anybody. So I thought what I would do is each month uh, send cards to my friends, just find something really silly and goofy so that they appreciate the fact that someone is thinking about them. Um, 
I did that for most of the year. The, actually, the last couple of months, I'll admit, I haven't been as uh, faithful to that. But I always get a, a text or something back from them saying, oh, it's so great to go to the mailbox today and get that. So I do feel like we have stayed more connected. Uh, February started out kind of rough for me. I uh, fell on February 1st and fractured my elbow and um, thought it might be in a cast or something for a while, which I never ended up doing. But that was on a Sunday. Come to work on Monday with my um, splint on and uh, sign up for a dictating class during that week so that I could dictate because I couldn't type with one hand. Um, by Wednesday of that week, I had the flu and laryngitis. I couldn't even talk or do the dictation. So it was quite a week. And that whole month, pretty much just about everyone on our team was sick. Was it COVID or just the flu? We never, I don't think ever really decided. We all think it was COVID, but no one was for sure. Um, but we made it through that month, um, hacking and coughing and all of that. Um, and my month ended up on a very, very sunny note with spending time. These are my MCW palliative friends. Ruth, if you're on the call, I love you. Um, we had actually rented a, cod, a condo in Fort Myers Beach um, for four or five days and had just an awesome time um, connecting with friends. There's, that's been exactly probably the number one thing that's gotten me through this year. My work friends, my outdoor, my out work friends, um, just can't say enough about it. Um, this was our first night there with the gin and tonics and having a blast. So had a great. this is probably the last picture I have of our team in our team room before we had the shutdown and we miss our team room. Um, we, you know, we're getting used to Zoom and stuff, but our team room was really our meeting place every day for meetings in the morning, for lunch. Um, so I miss that, but this is only part of our team. It's not everybody, but you can see Patrice was on the phone there. <laughs> of course, then comes March and everything, the world really just changed at that time. Um, we had to get used to so many different things especially in the palliative care world, how, how can you do palliative care from home or on a phone or on a video? Does it gonna work? Are you gonna like it? I personally hated it. I hate the masks. I hate having to carry around the hall pass every day just to get anywhere around the hospital. Um, some of those things haven't changed, but um, you know we've learned that we can, we are adaptable. We can do things from palliative care at home or by virtual. Um, the worst part for me as being a nurse is not being able to always hold as many hands or give as many hugs. I'll admit that I've broken some of the rules with permission from the, the patients and families to do that, but um, that's not how I grew up as a nurse or as a person. And um, I'm, I really like that. I miss that, that touching that we used to, used to get to do all the time. So we were making it through March, okay. And then um, learning again, how to have, stay connected to your team and um, trying to have your team meetings every day, learning Zoom, as my team will um, confirm, I am totally not a tech person. It, I'm probably, it took me forever. I actually, there, this, I forgot about this. This was one story when we, <laughs> we all thought we were blocked out, uh, had the, the video off and, and we weren't. <laughs> and so we were a little inappropriate at times, but we learned. Um, our team, thank you to um, my friend Martin and Maureen for sharing these pictures. Our team had a lot of fun with Zoom. Um, ton of laughter on our team. We played with backgrounds and different faces and these are only two of them, but um, two of my favorites and I appreciate, I did get their permission to use them. So thank you guys. Um, uh, Zoom has sort of become second nature. It's fun, but it's still not the same as being in the same room together. And then comes April. This is my mom. My mom turned 99 in April during COVID, um, she lives in an, a senior community. So it closed down in March. We weren't able to see my mom in person at all until summer came when they let people come outside. So for her birthday, we uh, all of her seven kids chipped in and bought her an electronic picture frame and sent pictures of our life our, when we were little, our family pictures, our current pictures, and um, pictures like you see here with me holding the birthday sign. Um, so that we could, um, so that she could, sh she could look at them and see us and spend time with us. Um, she, every single night since then, has spent about two hours going through all the pictures and we can keep sending her new ones too. So um, uh, what I found during that time were some, some pictures. Um, this first picture on the left is me with my COVID haircut. Um, my husband did that to me. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that bad, except the person who cuts my hair said, I should tell my husband, don't lose your day job. So 
Um, but the picture that's next to me there is when I was little. That was probably taken when I was six or seven, so in the mid 60s, early 60s. Um, and to the people who know me here and to my family, I think they still think I've never grown up. So I, uh, I, I just, this one just came to me recently and I just love that little picture. So I wanted to share that with you. But um, looking at the family pictures <clears throat> this year was kind of like doing a life review, you know, um, since, yeah, anyway, it, it's pretty cool. So. Um, so one of the reasons I actually did um, pick this goal was because there were people on our team who had been to the Advocate Aurora three day renewal retreat. And I wanted to make that as part of my goal this year. Um, unfortunately, the timing was my retreat was scheduled for like March 24th or something like that. It was like one or two weeks after the shutdown. So of course there was no, no retreat for this. But what they did do was set up a number of single uh, you know, one day um, events throughout the year. So in August, I uh, participated in a one day of renewal. The picture that's on the left there just shows the kit that we all got. It had some different things in it, like a little journal and a candle, some different um, like drinking vessels, crayons, pipe cleaners, things we could fidget with during the day. Um, we had different exercises during the day. There was a lot of time for introspection. Um, the one exercise, there were actually two exercises that were really cool. One was the first one they had us do was um, immediately sit down and write a letter um, from prior to March 16th or whenever the close down was, what do we wish we would have known then that we know now? And so a lot of it was about, you know, how, what changes were going to be in the world and the COVID and there was no way we could know any of that. But at the end of the day, we had to write a letter to ourselves um, about what we hope the world or what things will be like in March of 2021. And then we had to mail these to the facilitators of the class um, and then they're gonna mail them back to us in March so we can actually see if what we were hoping for comes true or not. Um, the second thing was our, our lunch was independent obviously. And um, uh, I, I found this um, garden outside of our uh, parking structure. Actually, I drive by it every day, but I've never spent any time there. It was a beautiful August day. So I spent my 50 minutes at lunch walking through the garden and I took probably 25 pictures. The, the flowers are gorgeous. And of course, as one of my goals at the end of the day, I said, I'm going to be taking a walk through this garden a lot. How many times do you think I've done it? None. But I have spent time in a different garden. This is my garden at home. And um, it's a perennial garden that I've worked really hard on over the last 35 years or so, um, trying to build and it pretty much it's perennial. So almost all of it comes back on its own and spend time out there every night. Well, most nights until the middle of August when it gets kind of tired, <laughs> but um, weeding and just enjoying the colors on the weekends, of course, sitting there with a beer or gin and tonic or something, just enjoying the peace. Um, the tree that's there is so huge right now. It was a baby tree when he planted it. So just to watch the growth and the beauty, it's one of my favorite places to be. And then the other thing that happened in, in August is this. Um, when COVID first came out, there were um, a number of uh, um, healthcare discounts you could get or things you could apply for. So the American Nurses Association uh, was, uh, you could apply for a week, I mean, a day, a night at the Great Wolf Lodge. So I put in an application and in, in July found out that I got one. So my sister and I spent a weekend at the Great Wolf Lodge, very socially distanced. You know, it was, they did a really lovely job at the resort, making sure people stayed safe. And we basically sat under these chairs here and, uh, and just enjoyed watching people. So that was really one of my highlights of the summer. Uh, so then um, the last thing about the summer was this. Um, my mom actually, we able, were able to come out. My great niece was having a baby. And so my, my niece, Anne, um, had a baby shower for her. Again, very, very well socially distanced, large tent outside. My mom was able to come. And this is my five generation picture of my mom. This is my mom, my niece, I'm sorry, this is my oldest sister, Kay. This is her daughter and her and her granddaughter, my, my great niece, Emily. And this is their new great, great, my new great, great nephew, Julian. And they're all doing well. This is my, my pride and joy. Joy is my favorite word in the whole world. And I tried to keep my joy board up. I didn't have it up all year. So 
once I was working on this presentation, I put it up again. I love to have a bulletin board at work that does not have work things on it. it has a lot of fun things. And not to belabor this, but my favorite new thing, thank you, Maureen, is my picture of Han Solo this year. That got added to my joy board. So <laughs> really happy to have that. Um, let me just quickly finish up here. Um, these are some of the strategies that worked for me over the year. They're not that they're not all the strategies, but they're the ones that or the best. Obviously, you can see, I hope that I have a good sense of humor. I love to be around people and enjoy my friends and my family, my team, my family, um, sending cards to friends. That really was, it was good for me. It was good for my friends. People that know me also know I love to knit and do anything with yarn. I was able to redo my joy board. The one other thing, oh, I'm sorry. I need, uh, the other thing was to meet monthly with my manager, Shamaha. That was actually part of my goal. She actually kept me motivated through the year and every month would ask, how am I doing on my goal? What am I doing to take care of myself? So she really did help me stay motivated. The one strategy that I didn't put on there was chocolate. And we have a lot of chocolate around here. So these are some of the resources, obviously not all of them. If you, if you just Google gratitude or happiness or whatever, you can get pages and pages and pages. So um, anyway, these were the few things that worked for me. The gratitude journal, my simple abundance book that I met before, mentioned before. Three good things um, is uh, it's basically like the gratitude journal. At the end of the day, you sit down and very simply write the three things, uh, three good things that happened to you during the day. So was this the best year to focus on this goal? I think it was. I think it really kept me on my toes. I got support from my manager. I got support from my friends. Um, and I do believe it, it, if I didn't, if I wouldn't have really been focusing on that, I'm not sure I would be in, in such a good state as I feel like I am right now. So I've seen better days, but I've also seen worse. I don't have everything I want, but I do have all I need. I woke up with some aches and pains, but I woke up. My life may not be perfect, but I am blessed. And I do have an epilogue. This is the creative part, trying to bring out some of my creativity. Um, I actually, a couple of days ago, just popped into my head that maybe I should have a song. Not, I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> um, I tried it in person, private, but that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna recite my poem, it's very quick. And I, it kind of has this blues beat to it, if you can picture that. Um, and it's called, Gotta Get Rid of These COVID Blues. All right, this comes the embarrassing part, everybody. Get ready. It's the year 2020. The winter has gone. COVID has come. The blues have begun. The spring is so long, alone in our homes. Can't get no hugs, can't hold no hands, can't see my friends. I gotta get rid, I gotta get rid, I gotta get rid of these COVID blues. Summer is short, stuck in a rut. It's freaking hot, can't get nowhere, it's gone to my butt. Fall of the year, the world is a mess. Gonna write me a song of happier times they'll get here, I guess. I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna survive. I know I'll survive these COVID blues. Thanks everybody. <laughs> I, I believe I did that. <laughs> that was fantastic, Sandy. <laughs> oh my God. So, <laughs> thanks everybody. Oh my God. Thank you, Sandy. And this is the portion of our time together where you can all start to chime in. So the question to maybe start us out is what point or points of Sandy's story that she told this year were you able to connect with? Um, this is Lisa Bullis talking. Um, I connected Sandy um, with when you talked about doing the one day retreat. I did that as well, the virtual retreat, and I thought it was, they did a wonderful job with it. I was feeling in a rut during that time, and I feel like it was just like the, the kickstart that I needed to, to really refocus on self-care um, during this, this very challenging time that we all are living through. So thank you for sharing your experience with that. You're welcome. And I highly recommend that to people. It really is. It really good is good. I was hoping for the three days, but the one day really did a good job. Thanks, Lisa. This is Christian Sinclair, University of Kansas. I appreciate you sharing that you tried to do things and you didn't always stick to it. I think that's, um, very relatable. Um, 
and I definitely would endorse the gratitude journaling when I'm able to do it and stick with it. It feels a whole lot better. Thanks, Christian. This is Ruth Payne and uh, Chaplin. And I, I wanna say thank you so much. I love the creativity. I love uh, the poem. It, it really um, challenges me and reminds me to do something creative, just totally out of my norm. So thank you, that was awesome. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> this is Chaplain Briggs in Sinai, Milwaukee. Just, you know, the, the song, I resonated with that. I used to be a DJ. <laughs> so, you know, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> it really, it really, it really resonated with that. But it was the words in the song that I really resonated with, like being shut down and every, at the steps from February all the way to, you know, to St. August and how that shut down, shut down, shut down. And, and there was just nothing you could continue to do. And uh, it just got really frustrating. So we started walking, you know. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all we could do. We go to Estabrook Park and we walk. So uh, I resonated with that. I'm not a journaler, but I'm trying to figure it out. So mm -hmm. thank you though. We're all trying to figure it out. Thanks. Andy, um, this is Rose. I'm one of the MPs at St. Luke's. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> thank uh, you, Rose. You worked really hard on this. And, and you know, I as well had the self-care mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. goal. I think also you speak to that whole being gentle with yourself. And if like something doesn't work out, it's okay. There are other things that do. And I think now is really a time where we all have to be a little more gentle with ourselves. And that really is a big part of self-care. Yeah. Thanks, Rose. That's true. This is Carrie from St. Luke's. Um, I think I, I agree with that, Rose. I've had to learn to be more gentle with myself and more gentle with those around me too, understanding that sometimes reactions that they may have um, may just be because everybody's going through a lot right now. Um, and then to, to tie into what Sandy talked about, the friends part, you know, um, I've I had to find new and different ways to interact with my friends um, and, and have done that with friends that I've been friends with for my whole life, but also have made new friends um, uh, in different online forums, um, some of my husband's friends, and we uh, play video games or board games online. Um, hey, Christian. <laughs> and, uh, and we have regular movie nights and just finding lots of different ways to stay connected, I think has been huge. Sandy, yeah, I, this is, um, I'm sorry, I, I just, want to jump in. This is Nick from Zilber. Um, thanks so much for sharing. It's so helpful. And I think getting us all thinking about how we're going to be resilient in coming months. I think a lot of us planned for three months, six months of this. Now going forward, self-care is going to be so important. And I know for at home, Kathy and I talk a lot about it and exercise is part of it. And then trying to be creative about new ways to interact with our friends is uh, really a, a challenge, but one worth uh, pursuing. But thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I was going to also say what I learned about myself was that I am resilient, but I also realized that you don't have to be, you don't have to be that way every day. Some days you just can't be. So trying to stay creative and, and connected are, are good things. Uh, this is Andrew, uh, chaplain with... Uh, Aurora there, uh, Sandy, I really appreciate your openness and transparency, <laughs> but also, uh, do you have that rap song uh, copyrighted? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find out what your stage name is. You know. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> Sandy, this is Prince. Yeah. And I was going to say, we all know you're a rock star. Yes, you've been doing this a long time. You're always or usually very a strong practitioner, a strong person. And to show your vulnerability, I think that's the part that hit me is that we're all human. Um, we're all doing our best. We're not alone with this, uh, these ups and downs. And um, thank you for sharing. Thank you for uh, being vulnerable and, and sharing your strategies. Thanks, Corinne. 
Well, Sandy, this is Peg. I would like um, the the picture of the Brady Bunch really hit me because um, it, it's it just feels um, like we're in little boxes, and um, it's going to take a lot of work to maintain relationships. And it's it it feels like sometimes that um, you know we've compartmentalized our emotions and our and our connections um, because we've become so task oriented um, during this time that we forget. Um, I can recommend that one of the things that our team uses is the um, what, what we're now calling auditorium mode um, of Teams. It shows when you click on, on that um, view, everybody appears like they're sitting in, in an, an auditorium. And it's, it's a, a riot because of what you can do as you lean forward or, you know, <laughs> hit somebody or whatever. So, but um, it's just a, a good reminder of how much work it takes to maintain um, relationships with the people you work with. Thank you. Thanks, Peg. I want to highlight a couple things in the chat. Uh, Rachel said that the portion that resonated with her the most was dealing with this frustration with COVID challenges and still being able to find some joy. Hearing a lot of people talk about this tension that we're navigating that you highlighted throughout your talk. Um, Jerry, did you want to Yes, I, I really don't have anything to add. I would just, <laughs> you know, piggyback on what everybody else said. And first of all, um, to echo others, uh, Sandy, thank you. That was tremendous, uh, very timely and much needed, it looks like for all of us. And I think we all found places we could connect. And as much as anything, it was a reminder. The other thing I would say is, um, wow, this, as Marty said at the very beginning, uh, this is my first time on here. And then the apprehension is, uh, and I do appreciate the vulnerability, but it's kind of intimidating. I, I hope this is not a mandatory thing. I appreciate your courage. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Sandy, for this wonderful talk. I know it's inspired all of us and we're probably gonna go and figure out our own strategies for these next uh, few months. I hope so. Did you have any concluding announcements or things you think people need to know? Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending, and have a wonderful weekend. We've got no chalk next week, but uh, in two weeks, we'll be meeting for our next one. We'll see you then. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs>